All right, for our photo one class, this is our first demonstration of processing, and this is for our, our jumping exquisite corpse exercise. I've plugged in my memory card, I go to my digital image file, and I have my exposures. Now I do not want to copy all of these from my memory card onto the computer, so what I do is I select the ones that I'm interested in looking at by holding down Command and selecting multiple photos. And then to get a better look at them to see if they're in focus, see if they have potential for processing, I simply double click on them and it will open them up in a program called Preview. Okay. On a PC that might be Windows Media Viewer, but on a Mac it's Preview. Now we can do some simple things in Preview. For instance, if your camera doesn't automatically rotate your images with the movement of your camera, which is called a mercury switch, then you can hold down Command Left or Command L to rotate them to the left, or you can hit Command R to rotate them to the right, or you could use this little rotate button. Let's see, where is that? Tools, Rotate. And what I like about Max is they'll teach you all the shortcuts. Right, so you can see the shortcuts there, Command L, Command R. Okay. If you go to Tools, we can also adjust color in Preview, but we're going to do that instead in Photoshop today. But this is what we were playing with previously. The main reason we're going to use Preview in this class is to get a closer look at our photos, and once you're in the thumbnails here, you can use your arrow keys to scroll through, and it helps you see which exposures you want to play with. It helps you see which ones are in focus. It helps you see the lighting conditions. We shot these in a, a shutter priority mode or a sports mode. So sometimes the lighting will be slightly different. It was outdoor light. You know, that one's a little bit lighter than this one just because of the changing light conditions. and I'm picking my favorite ones. Now for this project, we have to combine at least three photos using the head of one person, the body of another person, and the legs of a third person. This is what's called a background plate. And I'll just show you how I can use that, but it's not necessary to get the, the exercise done. How do I choose this to process more? I just click it and I drop it onto the desktop. And you see that little plus sign that happens? That means that it's not removing it from my memory card, it's simply copying it, making a copy of it onto my desktop. So for these, let's see, I like the arms there. So I'm going to take that one over. So this is where I'm picking my favorite shots of the series. Okay. And I like the head here, so I'm going to take that one. And Vanessa got some height. So I think I'm going to get Vanessa's legs here. And that's all I need. Three different people. If you want to composite more than that, you're welcome to. Okay, now I can close preview and I can eject my memory card. And the most common mistake is not labeling your memory card with your name and forgetting to take it with you. So as soon as I eject it, by right clicking it and saying eject, or by taking it down to the trash, which turns into an ejection icon, or by um, using the function key and F12 will often eject. Sometimes there's an eject icon up here too, but the easiest way is, is to just right click and say eject. And as soon as you eject the media, make sure you unplug it from your computer. Now, if it gives you trouble ejecting, it's usually because something's still open. <laughs> so preview is still using it, which is strange because I quit preview. Oh, but I st still have some things open that I didn't close. So I'm going to quit preview and then, then it will let it go. And you always want to eject it before you unplug it. And now I can take my memory card out and put it back in my camera.
And what I do is I just leave the door to it open on my camera. You know, so I don't accidentally put my camera away without the memory card in it. Oh. All right, now I have my exposures to play with. And what I'm going to do is open all of them in Photoshop. And I do that by drawing a box around all of them or holding down Command and clicking on them individually and then right clicking on one of them and then it will do it to all four items and open with Photoshop. If I just double click it will only open them in preview so I want to open them in Photoshop. And this is the first time we're using Photoshop and opening things into Photoshop and it looks similar to Pixlr, that free program we looked at. It has layers here, and it has history here under this icon. And this shows you all the steps we're going to use. And we opened four photos, but I only see the photo of Vanessa. And that's because it nests them in tabs up at the top. But because I want to be able to move them back and forth and composite them together into one image, I want to pull them each out into individual windows. And instead of having to do that individually, I can go up to Window, Arrange, Float All in Windows. The other benefit of that, it will stack them all, right? But the other benefit of that is that if I hit F9, it will show me all of them on the screen. This is an in-program window view and I'll see all the photos I have. So now, looking at F9, I want to start with my blank background. And if you don't have a blank background, just start with the one, the photo that you want to use the legs from. Okay, so this is going to be the photo that I bring my other photos on top of. But I'm not going to bring all of the photo. I'm going to cut out just the the part of the person I want. I'm going to go back to F9 and I'm going to find the legs I want to use. So now, like we played with in Pixlr, I'm going to take part of this photo and move it over on top of this photo as a new layer. To do that, I'm going to use the selection marquee tool, which just gives me a rectangular selection. And I'm just going to roughly get her legs, select around them, and then I'm going to use the move tool, which is that, that arrow at the top of the tools, and then just click and drag and drop onto my other exposure. I dragged all of them into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Right now when I went select all in Windows, what was it, float them in Windows? You go up you to, to one. you go up to window, arrange, yeah. and then float all in windows. I did that, but it only shows no. Okay, so you want to make sure that when you selected them from the desktop, that you selected more than one. Yeah, there's four there. I'll come check. I'll help you. So that moved the legs over. You see that the bricks don't match exactly. I shot this at more of, of a flat angle because I had to muscle in like paparazzi next to all of you shooting. But that makes it so I'm done with this photo. I don't need it anymore. So I can close it. I don't even need to save it. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the torso I want to use. So the, the arms and chest. <laughs> you first select it with the, the second tool down, the rectangular marquee. And then you use the move tool. And it gives you this little sticker icon. It's like cutting it out and dropping it over here. And it will make a copy of it over here. And you see it's making new layers on top of my original photo. Okay, then I can close that, and now I'm going to steal the head. Now these were all shot using the same settings, but since they were automatic and not manual settings, and because it was natural light that changes, you know, with cloud cover, 
Uh, the lighting's a little different in each one, so we're going to work on how to how to composite together and how to uh, fix that. But once you have everything into one file, then we can save this with a different name. We have the rectangular marquee tool. That's how we got our selections. Okay. And we're going to learn oh, yeah. another type of selection too, and then the, the move tool. Those are the only two we use so far. But right now, because I have one file which has all the components I want to use for this photo composite, it's like a quadruple exposure, right? Now I'm going to save it as a file type. So I go to File, Save As. That supports all these different layers. And that is automatically going to want to be a, what's called a PSD file, which stands for Photoshop Document. So the format is a Photoshop document. And I want to rename it with my name and some sort of description. So I'll call it jump, Jumping Corpse Exercise. And maybe SP15 for Spring 2015. So we always save as a PSD file. It's called a working format. That's so we can go back in and work on it. And we always save to the desktop. So if it's going somewhere else in its destination where, you can always hit Command D and it will navigate it back to the desktop. Then I say save and I can hit F11 to find it on my desktop. So that's the file. And because this is my working file, I'm also going to color it green. And that's where I go if I want to continue working on this. So let's continue working on it. Now that I've got the photos in there, I want to arrange them a little bit differently. So I can zoom in with Command Plus. That will make the image larger on the screen for me. I can zoom out with Command Minus. Okay? And if I want just a shortcut to fit it all on the screen, Command Zero. And they're all up in the same location. And that will make it large within the Photoshop window. Next, I can take each individual layer and turn them on and off with the little eyeball in the layer window. And I can also move certain layers on top of other layers. So if I wanted the head to move behind these shoulders, I can select the head layer and move it behind the shoulders. I can also do little things like this. So if I'm using, if I'm on the head layer, now I'm going to transform it. So I'm going to go up to Edit and Free Transform. The shortcut is Command-T, just like it was in Pixlr. It will draw a transform box around that layer. And I can do things like rotate it, scale it up or down. And if I don't want it to distort like this, as I'm pulling it, I just hold down Shift, and it will lock it to its original proportions. The other thing I can do is right click, and I can flip the negative. So I can flip it horizontal if I want this head facing in the other direction, which might be fun, because I might actually do a mixture of the two heads together, like that. I can also use the Move tool just to push it, and I can use the arrow keys to do little nudges, little movements. Right. Now let's do the same thing with the legs. So I'm going to leave the arms where they are, but I'm going to select the layer with the legs. And if you lose track of your layers, you can always label them, title them. So this is the legs, this is the head, this is the torso, and then this is the background, right? So I'm going to take my legs layer, I'm going to hit Command T, I'm going to hold down Shift, make them a little larger so that it lines up with the existing pants. Command minus to zoom out. So all of that's looking pretty good, except that the, the wall is obviously very different. So now I need to do a better selection. And one of my first Photoshop teachers 
said the art of Photoshop is the art of making good selections.